I want to go ahead and go over the settings tab on the PLC 400. If I tap the settings tab, it comes up with a bunch of information. And all you're doing here is basically telling the tool how you want it to work for you. General settings, I tap down here. If you have a cat, uh, if you have a cat file that you like to have heights on, I would encourage you to have heights on. I actually keep heights on almost all the time because when I'm working outside, let's say I'm doing work on concrete, I'm just laying out drywall track or I'm laying out something on the ground. If I have heights turned on, I can set my benchmark height on the ground as zero so that if I'm using the laser to lay out, the laser will always know to turn to the ground. If I didn't have heights on, it would be a lot more difficult of a process. So I usually keep heights on even if I have a 2D CAD. That's just my personal opinion. There's going to be future videos on how I, how I would do that. So I usually keep heights on because I know the tool is already measuring heights anyway. I like to see things as feet to an inch to a sixteenth of an inch. Outside of the U.S., they might want to use millimeters, but I would go to a sixteenth of an inch. Just That's just how you view what you're looking at, viewing your measurements. Coordinate display input, I like to have as NEH, and what that means is what if I have a point file on my USB and I need to import that into my tablet, I need to specify what it's what it's entering in as. Is, is it uh, organized as northern eastern height, ENH, etc. If you're not really importing point files, you don't have to worry about that too much, but once you start importing it, you're going to get really used to that. In America, it's almost always NEH. How do I like to look at decimals? Do I like the comma or the period? When I look at angles, do I want to see it to a tenth, tenth second, thing that's ten second of an angle or one second of an angle? I go to the to the lowest possible. Uh, VA zero. Where do I want my uh, my vertical angle to be zero out? Zero at. Is it either straight, looking straight across at the horizon, you know, horizontally, or do I want it looking straight up at zero? That's just a preference of how you want to read your vertical a uh, angles of it being zero or not. Language English, I mean, a lot of languages on here. I think they're adding them as they go. And then prism target, when I lose the target and I press the search button to find it, if I'm trying to find a prism, at what extent of a degree do I want it to search at? I just tell it to go up and down 25 degrees and left and right 25 degrees, and if it can't find me, I'll help it out. That's what that means. If I come down here to keyboard, um, obviously one English. Descriptions on or off. I guess you can turn those off if you want to. It's not really important. Project descriptions, I'm assuming. And then theme, night or day. That's all it is. Just difference of lighting. And then when you're laying out, if you have auto zoom turned on or off, all this is is when you have a prism connected to you and you're laying out, the CAD will automatically zoom into exactly where you are. I like to keep this off because I like to control the zoom a little bit better on my own. That might be your preference. Play with auto zoom on, auto zoom off when you're laying out and see what you like. And then project information on or off. Again, if you don't really care to see the project information that you typed in, you can turn it off as well. I think it comes up at the bottom of the screen when you're working. Let me see if actually that's going. Yeah, right here. Right. That's the project information. If I went ahead and turned that off, let's see if that goes away. Project information off. Check. There it goes, it goes away. All right, so that's up to you. I will keep that on for kicks and giggles. All right, so now let's go down here to tolerance, okay? This is just, again, how you like to view things. So when you're laying out, it'll the, the tool's gonna turn the the offsets that you're, that you're at green or red, depending on what you want. I like to see green sooner rather than later, even though I know I might be slightly off. So a good station, you know, all it's telling you is your, your um, your tolerance is within an inch and an eighth, right? If you want better tolerance, et cetera, or best tolerance, it's gonna change it to be within an eighth. An eighth. And it's, the tool's gonna to warn you when you're out of tolerance, it's gonna to be red when you're out of tolerance, but it doesn't mean you can't keep working. So if you have a tolerance of a quarter of an inch, but you're, like in real life, if your tolerance is a quarter of an inch and you can be within a quarter, you can still lay out even if your tolerance on the machine is an eighth. It's not gonna stop you. It's just, this is for your benefit, do you want the tool to turn green at an eighth, at a quarter, whatever you decide, that's what this is here, okay? All right, station tolerance, and you have your layout tolerance over here, however you want to decide, okay? All right, and let me just specify this, I guess, real quick. Station tolerance, when you station, it's gonna tell you when, when you're within, it's gonna be red if you're not within an inch and an eighth, and layout tolerance is gonna be uh, red if you're outside of two or three inches. So it's gonna turn green when you get within that 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 range. Okay, tool and connection. 
if I had a tool that was connected, it would pull, populate right here. That's a serial number of the tool that you're going to be connected to. And if you had a POS 180, you could select a different tool type, if, depending on the kind of unit you're looking at. Auto connect on or off. I like to have it, sorry, auto connect I like to have on because right when I turn the tool on, I want it to automatically find the unit. That's all that is here. If I was struggling, I wasn't connecting for whatever reason, I knew the tools turned on, I would press this refresh button over and over and over and over again until the sensor name came up. I will tell you this, that when you first connect the tool, it's going to take a while for it to connect until the tool's done calibrating. I will just say that right here. Okay. Parts per million. This is me specifying the air pressure in the air. In inches, right now I have it selected as, as inches mercury, okay? And I just go to Weather Channel and I just look this up on, online real quick. Generally, this won't affect the tool too much, but I like to keep this as close as possible to the average air temperature, air pressure, and wherever you are. So right now it's around 30 inches mercury. Outside Fahrenheit, it's not 68 degrees, and I would change it to, what, it's like 40 degrees today. This just helps you adjust. I'll show you what it looks like. Adjust automatically. The tool automatically adjusts to the temperature settings and the air pressure settings that you're in so that you can be even more accurate. And this is really critical if you're doing long, long distance measuring. And I'll go down system info. This is just telling you the controller you're using, the serial number of your unit, as well as your software and etc. So that is the settings. Okay. Very